My name is Peter Pollack. I go to the School in Information Studies. I'm talking about surveillance and simulating it. So I'm gonna use the word algorithms a lot. So normally we hear talking about a recipe, a set of rules, some kind of data comes in, it goes into this black box process that we don't know, and then data comes out. And what this kind of language makes us think about is these other conversations about accountability, about opacity, and about bias, which some of you are probably familiar with. So when thinking about these kind of conversations, I think about what kind of traps these conversations put us in. So when we're thinking about bias and we're thinking about transparency in algorithms, what does that make us think about when we're talking about algorithms? And when we're criticizing algorithms, what does that lead our criticisms to think about? So during this presentation, I'm gonna be thinking about algorithms more in terms of systems of representation. Uh, so we're actually kind of familiar with that based on the talks that have happened already, which is great. I don't really have to go into it too much. If you think about a map representing a river, this is a representation showing different ways that the river can exist and do different things. But what I also want to think about is how algorithms are designed to achieve a goal. So even before we're thinking about bias or transparency, we're already thinking about how the algorithms are designed to achieve a specific purpose before they're even programmed. So if we think about algorithms in this way, then we get these different kind of considerations. Uh, there's certain powers to represent people, represent things. There's these implicit assumptions built into the algorithms. And there's also specific people that are able to do things with algorithms. So thinking about that, uh, I've been working with these public records about algorithmic systems that are developed by the Los Angeles Police Department. And so these documents were uh, retrieved and they're being made accessible by this group in LA called the Stop LAPD Spying Coalition. Uh, which I work with. So these documents, there's hundreds of them, and they describe basically how these algorithmic systems are supposed to be designed. So they have the design rules for how somebody would implement these systems. So without having access to these systems, I can see specifically what these systems are supposed to do and how they're supposed to be made. So what I do is I look through these documents and thinking about algorithms as systems of representation, I ask these questions. What questions and problems does the algorithmic system propose to solve? What people, places, and things does it propose to represent? And when decisions are made, who makes them? When problems are raised, who accounts for them? So I'm thinking about these considerations. What is built into the algorithm by design? Not thinking even about uh, how the algorithm is implemented, what algorithms are being used, but specifically in the design principles, what are the considerations there? So starting from these documents that I showed you, I developed these simulations, which they're supposed to represent how these algorithmic systems work. So this is a simulation of this system called Operation Laser. This is Los Angeles Strategic Extraction and Restoration. So this is an LEPD algorithmic system to basically tally all of this crime data that's happening across Los Angeles. So it takes in gun crime data. Remember, this is a simulation. So what I'm showing you isn't actually real. It's important to say that. So we start by taking in gun crime data. And what this algorithm basically does is it sections off certain areas of the city. It's kind of faint. I don't know if you can see it and to these red boxes, which they call laser zones. So we talked actually earlier about redlining. So this is something that we at the Stop LAPD Spying Coalition called digital redlining, right? So you can see how there's these certain areas that are section sectioned off because they have more gun crime data there. So what happens in these areas is they're not only sectioned off, but additionally what the LAPD, LAPD does is they go into these areas, and if we play along here, what they do is when they enter these areas, they basically take all of the crimes that happen there and they tally up everything that's happened. And they basically rank uh, the people that are in there according to the number of crimes that they've committed. But not only this, they also rank them according to the interactions that they've had with the police. So within these regions, they basically tally all the people up that are related to the police or that have just been stopped by the police and they put them on this chronic, chronic offender bulletin. So when I'm making a simulation like this, what I'm thinking about is not how to make the algorithm more fair or more equitable, but I'm thinking about how is this algorithmic system a system of representation that takes these, these regions, takes these people, and represents them in a certain way? Uh, how is the laser zone, for example, a way of sectioning off an area to give justification for ranking people within it? Another thing that I'm thinking about is to what extent these designs of algorithmic systems give the developers and the users of these systems the flexibility to change how they work. So normally we think of flexibility as being a positive thing uh, where we want, we want things to be more flexible. But when you're thinking about systems that have the capacity to represent people, sometimes flexibility is an additional power. So what flexibility does the system give to its developers or users to change the rules of the system? And what consequences does this flexibility entail for the subjects of algorithmic systems? 
So thinking about this, I have another simulation uh, about a different algorithmic system that comes from the LAPD. And this is the record management system. Uh, and this record management system is created by this organization called Palantir, which some of you might be familiar with. And I sometimes make up these like joking, you know, parody logos of these companies that are evil. Uh, so basically what the system does is it tracks all records related to crimes from the LAPD. So basically I have the simulation going for all these crimes that basically the LAP LAPD has written in their documents that they want to track these things. So I basically just simulate them happening and every time they happen, I add a new record basically to this pool. So what I'm interested in, in terms of flexibility, is if there's the flexibility to change these rules for how people are associated, then doesn't that make it so that you can basically create any criteria for identifying crimes, any criteria for relating people together, and then use those in order to change your statistics for how good your crime prediction algorithm is working. So here I have two versions of the same simulation. So it's playing through the same story. Uh, the same things are happening. People are doing the same things. But on one side, you have basically tying, tying people together based on whether they commit similar crimes. And on the other side, you have tying people together uh, whether or not they're seen next to each other or whether they're apprehended in the same location. Uh, so these are all things that can be tweaked in this record management system. And what I want you to think about is if these things can be tweaked, then what kind of power does that give to these systems to be able to change the rules so that they can make certain uh, representations of people in reality? So that's kind of a, a, a dark note, uh, but the question that I want to be thinking about is when algorithms are reformed in response to public pressure, uh, do their design principles change? So when we make appeals for algorithmic bias or transparency, and we're asking for these systems to be more equitable, are we really interrogating the fundamental design principles that are underlying these systems? And also, uh, just to add, to be thinking about what kind of design rules would enable us to build alternative algorithmic platforms? And I know this is kind of a generic question, but in making systems like this, I'm thinking about what kind of design rules can be changed in order to make different kinds of platforms that don't do these things. So how deep do we have to go into the algorithms to be able to make something that would do something differently? Okay, thank you. <laughs>